Today we're going to talk about something called functions inside PHP, which is something that once you've learned functions, we can actually start to build things inside PHP. Up until now, we mostly talked about theory and how to do certain things that hasn't really had a purpose yet. But with functions, we can actually start doing some examples, which we'll do in the next episode. Now, the first thing you need to know about functions is that we have two different types. We have internal functions or built-in functions. And we also have something called user-defined functions, which is the thing that I think we use most of the time when it comes to building stuff ourselves inside projects. Build-in functions are functions that are already created inside the PHP language, so we don't actually have to create them ourselves. We can just simply reference to them and then start using them. And then user-defined functions are functions created by us, the user, in order to create chunks of code that we can reuse inside our code again and again and again without having to recreate the code again and again and again. We just simply reference to a function that we created and reuse that function repeatedly. But then the question is, how do we actually use a function inside our code? Well, if we already have a function that we created, or let's say a built-in function inside the PHP language, we can simply reference to the function by calling on the name of the function followed by a pair of parentheses. So as you can see on the side here, I do have an example of a function that I created. This is not a built-in function. This one does not exist inside PHP, but this is simply a function that I created somewhere and I just simply referenced to it there. Now, the parentheses that you see after the function are actually used for something because in some cases when we have a function we might want to pass in data into the function to do something with and that's what we use the parentheses for so in this other example that i have where i created a function called person info i have a pair of parentheses where i passed in two pieces of data i passed in one parameter which is just simply a string called daniel and the second parameter is going to be just a number called 28. now you can't actually see what is going on here because the actual function is somewhere else inside my code but the basic idea behind this function is if i were to actually echo it out like i'm doing here it is going to echo out Hi, my name is Daniel, I am 28 years old, which is actually not true anymore because I'm actually 29 today. And now at this point, I do expect that some people might be a little bit confused about how I can actually get, hi, my name is Daniel and I'm 28 years old by simple echoing out this function here. Don't worry, we will get to that in a second. We just need to talk about built-in functions before we can start talking about user-defined functions, which is the one that I created here. Now, when it comes to the built-in functions inside PHP, there's a lot of different built-in functions and you're not expected to remember all of them. I think the fewest of developers out there can actually remember all of them. So it's not expected of you just so you don't feel stupid or anything for not memorizing all the functions inside PHP. When it comes to built-in functions, we have quite a few. And I will leave some links in the description to places where you can actually go and look up built-in functions in case you do want to check some out yourself or check some out that we haven't talked about in this video here because we're just gonna take a few basic examples and sort of cover them this episode here. And just to mention it, the best way to probably get the name of a function you might want to use inside PHP is just to go to Google and search PHP function followed by, you know, the name that you want the function to do. So, you know, just Google something and it will probably pop up somewhere. Now, the first built-in function that I just want to show to show an example is something called string replace. Basically, this function here allows for you to replace a string of text inside another string. So if I were to take variable a which is equal to hello world i can go ahead and use this string replace or like it's actually called str underscore replace followed by a pair of parentheses because if we want to pass in some data we have to have the parentheses and inside the parentheses we need to add three different parameters and again if you're a little bit in doubt about how many parameters it needs to have inside a particular function that is built into php just sort of google the actual function just search php str underscore replace and Google's going to tell you what sort of data you need to pass into it for it to actually work. So inside this function here, you can see that the first parameter I passed in is the word world, which exists inside variable A. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying, okay, I want to grab the word world and I want to go and replace it with the word Daniel. And then I need to tell it, okay, so what sort of string am I trying to grab here and do this with? And in the end here, I just simply reference to variable A, which is the string that we have on top of there. So if I were to actually add an echo in front of this function here, I would actually echo out, hello, Daniel, because I replaced the two words with each other. In the next example, you can see that I have a similar function. This is one that is called string underscore repeat, which simply goes in and takes a string, for example, variable A, and it repeats it a certain number of times. So if I have variable A being equal to high, and I say, okay, I want to take this string underscore repeat function, 
and I want to pass in the string that I want to do something with and then say how many times do I want to repeat this string, for example, three times, then it's going to say hi, 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 once I actually echo it out. And then we have something called string position. And string position is something that you use quite frequently when it comes to your code. Basically, what this one does is that it takes a particular string like variable A, which is right now hello world, and it searches for a specific substring inside that string. So what I can do is I can take string position and add in the two parameters that I need. I need to add the first string, which is going to be the string that is actually the word that I want to search something in. And then the second one is going to be the substring that I want to search for inside the original string. So in this case here, because in programming, we start counting at zero, H will be number zero, E will be number one, L will be number two, and then the second L will be number three, which is actually where our string starts because we wanted to search for LO. So in this case here, our LO is going to be at position number three. And again, you might be asking me, well, Daniel, when are we ever gonna be using functions like this inside our code? Because you can't really see the purpose behind them. Just go ahead and wait, because at some point when you start writing PHP code, you will at some point need some of these different functions here. And you're gonna go like, oh, okay, so now I see when we might wanna use these in a certain situation. So I hope with these examples here that you sort of got an idea about what exactly built-in functions are when it comes to PHP. At some point inside this course here, we will talk more about built-in functions, but for now, I think this is kind of good just to sort of get you to understand what exactly a built-in function is. Now, personally, I think that user-defined functions are some of the most fun parts about PHP when you want to program something by yourself. Let's go ahead and talk about when exactly you might want to use a user-defined function. One example could be that if you created a small block of code that you expect to use multiple times inside your PHP application. So if you have a small snippet of code, instead of having to recreate that code multiple places inside your code because you have to reuse it again and again and again, you can just go ahead and create a function and just simply reference to that one particular function so you don't have to recreate the code again and again and again, which is going to optimize your code quite a bit and make it a lot easier for you when it comes to creating PHP code. And in some situations, we might want to have some code that we don't want to run yet, but we still want to have the code inside our application ready to be run once we can call upon it. One thing that's important to note here as well regarding what I just mentioned is that when we create functions inside our PHP code, it doesn't matter where inside your PHP code you create it. If you create it at the top of your file or if you create it at the bottom of your file, PHP functions always get loaded first. The only time it really matters about the order of functions is whenever you use functions inside functions, which is something we're not gonna cover just quite yet, but just know that PHP functions, it doesn't matter where you put them inside your PHP code, you're still gonna be able to reference to those functions no matter where you create them inside your code. So you don't have to put functions at the top of your document if you want to use them inside your code. So now let's actually go ahead and talk about how we can build our own user-defined functions inside our PHP code. So as you can see with the example next to me here, I created a function called calc add, and that's just the name that I came up with. I could call it pretty much anything that I wanted. Just note that you should probably not call it anything with special characters, anything that sort of breaks your code. Just go ahead and call it something normal using regular characters. Another thing as well is that if you're creating a function that has a name that is in multiple words, like calc add, the one that I created here, you want to create the first word with a non-capitalized letter, and then thereafter, any sort of new words has to be capitalized. And I should probably also point out something that might seem obvious to some people, but when you create a function and you need to give it a name, don't give it a name that already exists inside a built-in function inside the PHP language, because otherwise the PHP code is gonna get confused because are you using the built-in function or using your own user-defined function? This is going to not be so good for your code. So if we were to take a look at this function here, you can see that I created the function by using the function keyword followed by the name of my function. And then inside the parentheses, I added in two parameters. And again, we get to decide what sort of parameters we want to pass into our function. In some cases, we might not want to pass in some kind of parameters. In other cases, like this one, I might want to pass in parameters. And how exactly do you know if you need to pass in parameters? Well, if you take a look at the code inside my function here, you can see that I have a variable called value, which is set equal to variable num1 plus variable num2. So I could instead, if I wanted to, just have used numbers here. I could just have said one plus two if I wanted to do that. But because I want to reuse this function inside my code, I don't know if in one place inside my code, I want to calculate one and two, 
other places I might want to calculate 5 and 10. It kind of depends on which numbers I want to use inside this function to calculate together and it also makes my function a lot more reusable because I can pass in numbers and just sort of feed something to it. Kind of like a calculator when you type in two numbers and calculate them together. You don't know beforehand when you have your calculator which numbers you're going to pass in. So you need to make it possible to pass in two numbers and calculate them together, which is what I did here. And then simply after the two calculated numbers, I just simply returned the value, which is going to be equal to num1 plus num2. So one thing to note here as well that I want to point out, which is something that a lot of people seem to get confused about, is the only variables that need to actually match here is going to be the variables inside the parentheses, which is the parameters that I passed in. So as you can see inside the parentheses, num1 is the first parameter inside my parentheses, and num2 is the second parameter and num1 and num2 are direct references to num1 and num2 inside my function here. Now just follow with me for a second okay because in this next example you can see that I actually have the function that we just saw at the top of my code and then below there I simply echo out the function but you're going to notice something because inside the actual function that I echo out in the middle there I echoed out calc add and then I added in two and four as the two numbers inside my parameters. But now you might be asking, well, hold on, Daniel. Aren't you gonna pass in num1 and num2 inside the calc add down there where you echo? And this is because num1 and num2 inside our function are just placeholders. The only place where these variables need to be the same and need to match up is inside the function. So num1 up there needs to match up with num1 inside the function and num2 needs to match up with num2 inside the function. But when we actually need to use the function, we just pass in whatever data we want to pass in. Of course, in this case, it would make sense to pass in a number since I'm calculating stuff. But you sort of get the idea that I can just pass in two random numbers and they will be assigned to the slot of which parameter I'm using. So num1, since that's the first one inside the parameters, will be assigned to two. And then num2 is going to be assigned to four because of the order in which I pass in the parameters inside when I actually use the function down there. And now there is one more thing that I want to talk about before we end up this episode here, which you probably have a question about. What the heck does return mean? Because I do tend to hear people get confused about return versus echo. Like, what is the difference here? Well, basically, return simply returns a value without actually outputting it. Echo, on the other hand, or print, or whatever you might want to use to spit something out into the browser, actually spit something into the browser. So in some cases when we want to do something like a calculation, we might not necessarily want to actually spit something out inside the browser, but we still need to be able to return a value and use it somewhere. In that case, we will use the return keyword and it is actually a habit inside functions to use the return keyword whenever you need to return some sort of data, whether it be a number or a string or something. And if I want to echo out the value or whatever the function is going to return for me, then I want to echo out the function just like I did here instead of echoing inside the actual function. The reason I'm mentioning this is because I see a lot of people who start programming PHP using echo inside functions to spit out data. So whenever they just simply reference to a function, Function, it automatically spits something out inside the browser, which you can do, but unless you have a particular reason to do so, just go ahead and use the return keyword instead and then echo it out afterwards. So I think that is pretty much what I want to talk about when it comes to functions inside PHP. I am going to stop it here. There's plenty I could talk about when it comes to functions, but I don't want to overload your brains. So let's just go ahead and end it here. And in the next episode, we're actually going to do an example where we're going to use a function in order to actually calculate an actual input. So let's say there's a form inside your website where the user can type something in or do something. Then we might want to do something with that data inside our website. And that's what we're going to do in the next episode. So I hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you in the next one.